So let's just talk about um, child acting just for a second. I'd love to get your perspective on this. What are some things you've seen in, in with child actors where the parents do things really right, some good things? And then we'll take the flip side. What are some things that parents need to look out for if they start pushing their child to be a child actor? Oh, uh, gosh, it's hard to say what they do right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there must have been some things like it sounds like your parents, you know, they didn't let you do a lot of these things until you turned 18. And you sort of thought that that was maybe a little bit of a blessing. Um, so maybe that's one thing to, to, to look well, at. Well, I think I think the thing with my parents, well, so do right is to is to just support your kid in whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. That's what any parent can do. Right. And that's what I wanted to do. And they could see that I would be coming back from these classes excited. And so, you know, they scrounged up the money and sometimes they'd have to go to my brother and and get him to kick in and because they could see that I loved it, you know? So Mm -hmm. they just supported what I was doing, but they didn't in in any way, I would say the word encourage or push me toward. Whereas most young kid actors, most are, it's their stage parent that's Mm -hmm. pushing them toward it. Something that they wanted that they didn't get to them that they want their kids to achieve that goal. And then what's even worse is when a kid actually starts working. And, uh, you know, for example, Virgil Fry's daughter was Soleil Moon Fry, Punky Brewster. Now, she chose it because she was around that environment. Her her her, uh, her half-brother, Mino Palouse, worked a ton in the 80s, just like series to series. And uh, so she just grew up in it and decided she wanted to do it. And that that's a little bit of a different uh, ball of wax. But most of these kids, you can, their parents are sort of pushing them into it. And uh, that's where, and then what's, what's scary though is when it, if they start making money, even even say like in Soleil's case or uh, another friend of mine uh, uh, who passed away last year, Christoph St. John, who was who had a stellar uh, television career, last 15 years was on Young and the Restless, uh, won a couple of daytime Emmys on there. You know, they, they had this tremendous amount of pressure at a young age to be providers, mm-hmm. and that's where it gets dangerous. Yeah, when they, as a child, for two reasons. One, it's an enormous amount of pressure, but two, it's an enormous amount of power. When you're the provider, your parents aren't the provider. That's 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 not natural, mm-hmm. you know? The emancipation laws back then where you had to be 18 to work a, a, a full day. So the idea was to be 18 and look 15. Hmm. And so I was, I was looking 15, and I had five years training under my belt, and as soon as I turned 18, uh, I just didn't stop working for like six years. And... Uh, and the first big break was Children of the Corn. The story there is uh, uh, that when I went into the audition, the uh, guy who was the reader who went on to become a very successful casting director, Jeff uh, 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 Goldberg, uh, tells the story. I pulled a, I pulled a, a knife on him, a, a fake knife, but he didn't know that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Which is not something I recommend anybody does, uh-huh. but he always tells people not to do. But I was young and hungry and... And uh, it helped leave an impression and uh, helped me get me the job. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. If you'd like to hear the full interview, just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcasts. Or to go directly to the episode, just use the link in the show notes. Thanks for watching.